In this video, me and my friend race to see who can beat Cuphead first, but that's not all. We spent hours putting together a point system with various challenges and punishments. For example, you can gain points by getting S or Pyrinx and use said points on your opponent to ban charms, weapons, or even redo bosses. There are a ton of other challenges and punishments, a full list of which can be found in the description if you ever get confused throughout the video. We've also used a glitch to access expert mode at the start of the game, so all bosses will be on the hardest difficulty. Huge thanks to Beaver Longface for competing against me in this challenge. He makes some amazing Cuphead content, and you should definitely check out his channel and POV of this challenge, which can be found in the description. It's a clash of two titans, two Cuphead masters, the ultimate Cuphead speedrun challenge. Only one of us can win. Watch in the end of the video to find out who takes home the victory. Three, two, one, go. And the challenge was off. We were both at the start of the game on new save files, each with 19 bosses standing in our way. I started off by grabbing the coin from the tutorial level and three more coins from Mac, trying to waste as little time as possible. After beating the first run and gun, claiming five more coins, I was onto the first boss. Even though we're on expert mode, I practiced Inkwell Isle 1 so much that it wasn't all that challenging. Because of this, I was able to S rank Goopy and beat him in under a minute and 30 seconds, already putting me at two points. However, Beaver had already taken the early lead. Not only did he already have two points as well, but he was already on Ribby and Croaks while I was still on the root pack. I didn't want to fall too far behind this early on in the challenge, so I knew there was only one thing I could do. Unlock Ultra Instinct. And shortly later, I caught up with Beaver on Ribby and Croaks. We were only seven minutes into this challenge, but I was already feeling a bit nervous. Beaver and I were neck and neck on Ribby and Croaks, and one of us was about to die. There's no tigers, and I think I'll be fine. Please, tigers. Give them tigers. Come on, game. No, what? Yes. Tigers! <laughs> Let's go! I'm so bad at it! <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's on the back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no! Dude, there was so left! Bad. Well, it was refreshing to know I'm not the only YouTuber who jinxes himself during Cuphead challenges, and a minute later, I made it past Ribby and Croaks. In all seriousness, though, I wanted to use this little head start to grab some more points. So while Beaver was finishing off Ribby and Croaks and starting Hildeberg, I beat the first mausoleum, putting me at three points. This gave me just enough points to make Beaver unlock the Cursed Relic, meaning he would have to beat the first mausoleum to access Isle 4, complete the Graveyard Puzzle, and beat the Seeker Boss. But this didn't stop me from trying to mess with Beaver a bit on Hildeberg first, though. Man, Hildeberg S rank? I don't know if I do. Dang. I, I didn't actually beat her yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but trust me, uh, haven't gotten hit yet. Actually, I don't think I'm there on my parries. Oh. Uh, final phase, bro. Actually, no, you can't You can't get any in the, in the, in the final phase, right? Just can't. Start. <laughs> I'm trying to mess what with you. What are you doing to me here? Trying to lie to me? Uh, no, certainly not. No, no, no. How about this game? <laughs> With Beaver now having to spend extra time unlocking the Cursed Relic, I figured this was a great time to grab some more coins from the second run and gun. Using all my points to slow Beaver down ended up being a really good play on my part as he was stuck on the secret boss for a bit of time. However, in turn, I wasted so much time on the second run and gun, dying multiple times right at the end. Oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. I'm so bad! What am I doing? I think the nerves were definitely getting to me, and I was pretty disappointed I spent so much extra time here. But eventually, I did P-rank the second run and gun, giving me another point as well as five more coins, which I plan on using to buy charge. However, I realized that I didn't even have enough coins for charge in the first place since I had to buy a few other weapons to even access it, so the past 10 minutes were more or less a complete waste of time. Trying not to let this get to me too much, I then went on to beat Cagney Carnation, but then Beaver enacted his first punishment, making me unlock the Cursed Relic. This meant Beaver and I were once again on the same boss. This was definitely going to set me back a good deal of time, but overall, this didn't give me too much trouble. I soon found myself completing the graveyard puzzle and beating the Seeker Boss on my first try, which greatly helped my situation. With Beaver's punishment completed, I continued my journey to beat the game, leaving Beaver back on aisle 4 as he still hadn't completed the Seeker Boss yet. I didn't ditch him for too long, though, as he unlocked the Cursed Relic, just as I was gaining another point from listening to Die House.
house. Even though I had the point advantage, by the time I finished listening to Die House, Beaver had practically caught up to me, and we were both on aisle two. I started with Beppy the Clown, while Beaver started with Jimmy. My plan at this point was to get through bosses as fast as possible, all while building up a defense of points. Doing my best to stick to my plan, I asked Frank Beppy the Clown, giving me an extra three points. I then followed up by beating Baroness Von Bonbon bon in under a minute and 30 seconds, and beating Funfair Fever. I had gained a little ground on Beaver, but by this time, he had already asked Frank Beppy the Clown, beat Jimmy, and was without a doubt enacting whatever plans he might have up his sleeve. Nonetheless, I kept amassing points, P-ranking Funhouse Frazzle, beating the second mausoleum, and beating Wally Warbles with only P-Shooter. I even grabbed a point by taking a quick break with the Barbershop Quartet. To say the least, I had amassed a decent amount of points. However, all the time I spent gathering points kept Beaver only a couple steps behind me as he was now on Wally Warbles. And then, just as I was finishing up aisle 2, what I feared came true. All this time I was gathering points, Beaver was carefully plotting a punishment that he hoped would cause me to fall far behind. Okay, I'm gonna use all my points. Oh, hey. Go get the charge shot and use it on the B. Wait, surely you don't, you don't mean charge, right? No, 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 Chaser, 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 no, no. Okay, okay, I'm gonna grab Chaser. As most of you know, Chaser is one of the weakest weapons in the game, and not only was I forced to spend four of my coins to buy it, but I also had to beat Rumor with it, which would without a doubt add a few minutes to my run. While setting me back a bit, to my surprise, I did manage to beat Rumor with Chaser only on my first try, which was huge and allowed me to further set into motion my plan of amassing points. Over the course of the next 10 minutes, I P-ranked Rugged Ridge, S-ranked Werner Werman, and beat him in under a minute and a half, which greatly increased my overall points. And all this time, Beaver was still on aisle 2, so things were looking good for me. But what came next would even out the odds more in Beaver's favor. Man, I just got my P-rank, which gives me 3 points, which means I want you to go back and refight Hildeberg. Right now? Yes. All right, all right. I'm going. I'm going back. And just like that, Beaver had hit me with another punishment. It was definitely gonna sink to walk all the way back to aisle one to fight Hildeberg, especially since she can take up to two minutes sometimes. And while it didn't take me too long to beat Hildeberg, this gave Beaver the chance to make up some time and enter aisle three. Even after redoing Hildeberg, I still felt pretty confident though. Not only did I have the boss lead, but I had the points lead as well, so I felt good enough to take a bit of extra time to gain some more points and coins. And after I went back to aisle three to beat Captain. And Briny Beard, I did just that. I started by beating Perilous Piers, which probably took me a bit more time than necessary, and completing the third mausoleum as well. But when I checked to see how Beaver was doing, he was already on Calamaria. He seemed to come from almost nowhere, greatly decreasing my boss lead. I was done messing around trying to gain points. All these points were going to mean nothing if Beaver got to the end of the game before I did. We were two speedrunners at the finest, racing against each other, beating one boss after the next. I beat Calamaria, Beaver beat Calamaria. I beat Dr. Call, Beaver beat Sally Stageplay. I beat Sally Stageplay, Beaver beat Werner Werman. I was just barely ahead on bosses, but just as I beat the Phantom Express, Beaver hit me with another punishment that would greatly affect my run. By the way, when you get to King Dice, I'm banning Dash. Oh, no. <laughs> Not that yeah. again. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah. It was going to be super annoying to beat King Dice without dashing, but it wasn't anything I hadn't done before. I started off strong by beating the Tipsy Troop and Pippin Dot, but then Beaver managed to beat Dr. Call without bombs, meaning he had gained an extra three points. And he wasted no time with them by making me redo the Seeker boss. At this point, I was going into Mango Scene with 4 HP, and I could still complete this attempt before having to enact Beaver's punishment. I was really hoping to beat King Dice, here because if I didn't, I would be set back at least 5 minutes and Beaver was only getting closer to me on bosses. But after all, this was Mango Steam, basically the easiest boss in Cuphead. There is simply no way I could mess this up now. <laughs> I just dashed, I'm an idiot! <laughs> yeah, the reason I- Oh no, he's gonna deal yeah, with it. an idiot! Over. I just dashed, I should've yes. unbound it. I should've unbound it. Somehow, I found a way to mess it up by forgetting to unbind Dash, meaning I had failed Beaver's punishment. Not only that, but I now had to head over to the DLC to redo the Seeker boss. Beaver was really catching up by now. However, I had a good deal of points, and now was the perfect time to put them into play. You gotta force buy and use Chase around King Dice. 
I can do that. Okay. Well, I was hoping this would buy me a little extra time because of Chaser's low damage output. As for me, I now had to go back and redo the secret boss. I knew the secret boss didn't have a lot of health, but every second I grew more nervous because Beaver had only a few bosses left. Fortunately though, the secret boss didn't give me too much trouble and I beat it on my first try, but Beaver had now completed the Phantom Express and we were both on King Dice. I knew King Dice would take longer for Beaver since he had to only use Chaser, but on the other hand, I still had to be King Dice without dashing. I was definitely going to make sure to unbind dash this time, but at least I still had my trusty charge shot to carry it home. At least that's what I thought. It'd be a shame if someone took that away. Oh, uh, yeah, what? I'm not saying I will, but oh, thank you, if thank you, you, um, if I uh, happen to take away charge on King Dice, that's... That would be kind of snicker. Yeah. No, it's Let's just theoretical, that. right? You're not saying it. No, no. No, that's what's happening. Oh, you would... Ah. Yeah. No, no charge. What? If I do the chaser, you can no. do no charge. No! Beaver was putting everything on the line, trying to slow me down as much as possible. It was coming down to the wire, and we were both on King Dice. But throughout this whole challenge, I continued to build up a points defense, and now was the time to enact my master plan. After your attempt at King Dice, redo Wally Warbles. Why? Why did you do that to me? It did so much work. It was so difficult for no reason. <laughs> This definitely took off a good deal of pressure, but I still had to be King Dice without dashing, and I couldn't use charge as well. It wasn't going to be easy by any means, but going into King Dice, I tried to keep myself together as best as I could. I started with the Tipsy Troop, then onto Pippin Dot, and finally finishing up the three mini bosses with Mango Steen. I was going into King Dice with 3 HP, but not dashing for his card attack was not going to be fun. I knew beating King Dice here would greatly improve my chances of winning, so even though I felt super pressured, I pushed forward and eventually beat King Dice. I finished with only 1 HP, so it was pretty sloppy, but nonetheless, I was now onto the final boss of this challenge. Meanwhile, Beaver had beaten King Dice himself and now had to redo Wally Warbles. I had a good chance of winning here, just as long as I didn't find a way to mess it up. Well, luckily, I did have practice on that. I'm such an idiot. I... Oh my gosh. Dash is still unbound? Yes! <laughs> Why do I always do this type of stuff? Of course, I would forget to rebind Dash after beating King Dice, but this really didn't set me back too much. I had done the Devil on Expert mode hundreds of times, and I could see the finish line in sight. My next attempt, I made it past the first phase with 2 HP, which was acceptable. But when I got to phase 2, I made a mistake that I've almost never made. Oh, what? Wait, 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 wait. I, I watched up the freaking platform. What? Over. This definitely put on the pressure. And what was even worse was that I just figured out that Beaver was in the middle of listening to a quick break. If he had the chance to finish listening to this song, he would gain another point and have enough to make me redo another boss. If I didn't beat the devil here, Beaver might have the chance to beat Wally Warbles, make a comeback, and swipe the win from me just as victory was at my fingertips. I had done the devil so many times, but bosses that are usually easy can become 10 times harder when a nerve-wracking challenge is introduced. If I didn't beat the devil here, Beaver would finish listening to the barbershop quartet and send me back who knows where. I had to beat the devil here and now, and with the end in sight, I found myself at the final phase. Oh my god. Oh, dude, I don't know, I'm on the final phase! I won't shut up! <laughs> Come on! No, no, wait, wait, wait! Come on! Oh! I think I'm gonna do it. Yes! No! I just did it. Like, dead! I know exactly what you're gonna do. If I died there, you would have made me redo a boss or something. Get back to Wally with me! With less than 10 seconds on the barbershop quartet, I managed to beat the devil and take home the victory. It really came down to the wire at the end, and beating Beaver was not easy. But if y'all ever want to see some type of rematch between Beaver and I in the future, let me know in the comments. Please do check out Longface Beaver's channel in the description. I had so much fun making this video with him, and he has his own video of this competition as well if you want to see his POV. Liking this video would go a long way, and if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to help me on my journey to 1,000 subscribers. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another challenge video of mine, check out the video on screen where I attempt to beat the entire cup at DLC with the worst weapon in the game. Thanks so much for watching this video, and peace out, fellas.